are you ill, Eugene? No. Not ill, just horror. Horror. Horror! Good <laughs> always, Mr. Mulchface. Oh. oh, that's bad at your rage. You must leave it off gradually. Nonsense, you mark. It's only poetic horrors, isn't it, Eugene? Oh. Poetic horrors, is it? Well, I beg your pardon, I'm sure. What is it? A sewing brush? Oh, there, never mind. Wouldn't you like to present me with a nice new one inlaid with mother of pearl? Hmm? Oh. Not a scrubbing brush. What a shit. Jeannie shouted to sail away. Far away to the edge of the world. Where the marble floors are washed by the rain. And dried by the sun. Where the south wind comes up and sweeps over the green and purple carpets. Or a cherry that takes up into the sky. Far away where the stars are lapsed. And don't have to be filled with paraffin oil every day. Well, there is nothing to do but be idle, selfish, and useless. <laughs> no, James, how would you spoil it all? <coughs> yes, to be idle, selfish, and useless. That is, to be free, and beautiful, and happy. Has it ever not desired that? The woman you love. <laughs> <laughs> My ideal. And what's yours? That of any of the other people that live in these hideous rows of houses. Sermons and scrubbing brushes. With you to preach the sermon and your wife to scrub. Oh, he cleans the boots, Eugene. And you'll have to do them tomorrow for saying that about him. Oh, don't talk to me about boots. <laughs> your feet would be beautiful on the mountain. My feet would not be beautiful on Hackney Road without boots. Oh, calm, can you? Don't be vulgar. Mr. Watchman's ain't accustomed to it. You're giving Nora's dick. I mean, the wet ones, isn't it? Good flag, hey, boys waiting. Three, three, four, you're in the kitchen now. The onions have come. Ugh, onions. Yes, onions. Not even Spanish ones. Nasty little red ones. You should help me to slice them. Come along. <laughs> Can't eat in that band or Earl's nephew like that. It's going too far with it. Look here, James. Do we, uh, do we often get taken queer like that? I don't know. He talks very pretty. I always had a turn for a bit of poetry. Kind of takes out of me that way. He used to make me tell a fairy story when she was a kitty hole. And I. Uh, indeed. You used to make up fairy stories out of your own head. I never should I never should have supposed you had it, didn't you? By the way, since you've taken such a liking to Mr. Marchbanks, I should warn you. He's mad. What? <laughs>
wrinkled. And just old. <laughs> no more writing for today. Please pause it. Come, sit and talk. Yes, I must be talking to you. You're beginning to look better already. Why must you go out every evening talking and lecturing? I hardly have one evening a week with you. Of course, what you say is all very true, but it does no good. They don't mind what you say one little bit. They think they're agreeing with you, but what's the use in their agreeing if they go into just the opposite of what you tell them the moment your back is turned? Oh, there must be some good for that if they prefer my pass into the worst places on Sunday. Oh, the worst places aren't open on Sunday. Besides, No, 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 not a prossy. <laughs> not jealous of anybody. Jealous for somebody who is not loved as he ought to be. Me? You? <laughs> Why, you're spoiled with love and worship. Tell me, Eugene. Eugene? I find it unfair that all the love must go to you and none to him, though he needs it so much more than you do. What's the matter? Am I worried, you? <coughs> No, not at all. You know I have perfect confidence in you, Canada. <coughs> Vain thing. Are you so sure of your irresistible attractions? Canada, you're shocking me. I never once thought of my attractions. I thought of your goodness, your purity. That is what I confide in. What a nasty, uncomfortable thing to say to me. <laughs> you are a clergyman, James. A thorough clergyman. So Eugene says. Eugene is always right. He's a wonderful boy. Do you know, James, that though he has the least suspicion of himself, he is ready to fall madly in love with me. Oh, he hasn't the least suspicion of it, has he? <laughs> <laughs> Confidence in my 
goodness and purity. I would give them both to poor Eugenius. Willingly, I would give my shawl to a beggar dying of cold. 